appropriation, taking or stealing cultural elements without giving credit for authentically representing people or cultures from which they originate. The banjo is one example of cultural transmission in the Americas. Before 1800, the banjo was thought of as a black instrument played by people from Africa and African descent through the Americas. Racism is one of the many concerns that shape the way popular culture misrepresents people of color. For example, starting in the 1830s, white men dressed in clownish outfits and painted their faces black, pretending to be black men and women in minstrel shows. Performers used negative stereotypes of black music and culture. These shows were very popular among white audiences. So these people would go and, and learn the music um, from the, uh, their neighbors, and then they would take it and then dress up as, uh, and, put, and put actual like shoe polish on their face. And then they would charge other people to come and watch the shows. They would use the music not to um, say, oh, these people, this is what wonderful music this is this. But they said um, they would make comedy shows and make fun of and, and kind of put out the idea that um, they that the music was was silly or, um, or, but sometimes the, the audiences really liked the music and wanted to, um, copy the music and bring it home with them and try to play it themselves. So, um, so they would make a lot of money going from place to place. And it spread that idea of racism across the country from small town to small town. Though many blackface minstrel performers learned to play from black musicians, they used the banjo to perpetuate harmful stereotypes of black people. One blackface performer, Joel W. Sweeney, learned to play from enslaved black banjo players near his home in Virginia. Then he took songs he learned and played in minstrel shows across the world. Sweeney never credited the musicians he learned from. So those people that he learned from, do you think they got any money from those of shows? Not. They wouldn't even get any money if they they wouldn't even get any money if they were the ones who were performing because of the laws of the way that it was set up. Um, and then and then we in the history we never knew about it. Due to racism and segregation, black musicians were not allowed to perform in many theaters and seldom recognized publicly for their achievements. White performers in blackface, as seen here, were some of the most popular musicians of the time. White people wanted to play this new popular minstrel music at home and wanted banjos. Because wooden rimmed banjos were easier to make than gourd banjos, these were manufactured for purchase. Blackface minstrelsy and the new popularity of the banjo pulled it further away from its cultural origins. What was once known as an African instrument had become a symbol of rural white America. So when we think about um, music, becoming really popular at that time they we didn't have um we didn't have music um where it was recorded we had music that was written out and um they would sell sheet music for people to try to learn how to play and at that time um they would have what's called player pianos and player pianos, you would it would be a cylinder that you would slide into the piano and it would push down the keys. And so a lot of these songs were uh, copied by um, 
composers from New York City, and they made all of their money by copying the style of music of what they heard, and then they would publish it and make a lot of money off of the uh, the sheet music that um, would go all go to everybody's house so that they could learn how to play it themselves. And so this was the start of how the music business would take, um, take control of the music and appropriate the culture in, and change it into popular music.